Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be painting this little lantern that I drew and you can stop the video and draw it yourself. I started to draw it and then realized, oh, you know, I should do a video of this. So I'm just going to go ahead right now and do it in pen. I wanted to go over it as a sketch, an ink sketch. So that's what I'm doing here. I just took a photo off of the internet. I saw oh, several years ago, and I, I bought a new iPad. <laughs> um, I got the larger one that I should have gotten a couple years ago, but I had dropped my my 10.9 inch or whatever uh, iPad that I had, and I broke the screen. So I finally went ahead and got the larger one that I wanted. Um, I, I always thought that I should have gotten the larger one before I'm a musician, and all of my music I keep on my iPad. And a sheet of music is eight and a half by 11. So using the 12 inch iPad would have been great or 12.9 inch, whatever. So anyway, I went ahead and bought it and transferred all these photos. I had like 7,500 photos on my other iPad and probably one tenth of those photos were my photos. The rest were reference photos that I had taken that I might have wanted to paint one day. This just happened to be one of them from a couple of years ago. I had done another lantern painting. I'll try to find it and link it at the end of the video uh, for you. I did this other lantern a couple of years ago and I had a photo of this one and decided to do that one today using ink and changing the style of the painting a little bit by using the ink. I'm using a Micron pen here, whichever brand is your preference. And um, it is the uh, 0.05 size, the smallest one. Um, I went ahead and added some branches to my sketch. And I'm gonna go over a lot of this with masking fluid. Uh, I started to wet the paper and then I changed my mind here. What I'm going to do is grab my masking pen and this is made by Holbein. You can find it on Amazon. Just, just do a search for Holbein masking fluid pen and it will pop up. Uh, if I Remember, I will link them below, but since I don't have internet yet where I'm at, I try to do a lot of this ahead of time. Then I drive to an internet signal to upload my video, and sometimes I forget to attach things in my description that I would normally attach. So that's why I'm telling you, you can get this stuff on Amazon. This is the Holbein Masking Fluid Pen, and I like it. It works great. I can get really fine lines as you can see here. They're very, very fine. I'm off camera for a second, but um, you can see here how fine they are. Sometimes I get a little dot of fluid, but that's easy to fix at the end. You can always clean up your, your little wide spots with a brush and add some color to them to change the size. But when you do use masking fluid, just make sure you wait until it is fully dry before beginning painting. If you don't, then when you go to lift that fluid later, when, when you're done painting and you wanna lift it off, it will stick to your paper. Now, I'm using a Moleskine book today that came with my art toolkit. Uh, you can get that at arttoolkit.com. And this came in my art toolkit. I'm not normally a fan of Moleskine books. The paper is too light for my liking. In fact, yesterday I had posted on Instagram a photo that I had used masking fluid on in this book. And it was a picture of birch trees. You can follow me on Instagram at Sharon Cullen Art. And the birch trees, when I went to take the masking fluid off, uh, the paper tour. This paper is just very lightweight. It's not great paper. Some of you may be a fan of it, but I just, I'm not. You'll see later in the video how doing a wet on wet technique, this paper buckles and you get puddles and all sorts of stuff, but I try to fix it with salt. Now here I'm just taking the fluid and I'm dotting it in here and there. I'm sorry that I'm off camera a little bit. 
but I'm just dotting it on the edges of the lantern that would be facing up toward the sky where the snow would catch basically. And otherwise I'm just dotting it all over the paper to make little snowflakes. You can also use gouache at the end or white ink. I love my Bleed Proof ink by P Dr. P.H. Martin. That's probably my favorite because it's more opaque even than gouache. But uh, And I'll use a little bit of it at the end. But I wanted to use the white of the paper and give you some options here. So I'm doing all of the above. I'm doing masking fluid. I'm using salt. And I'm going to use some of my um, Bleed Proof white ink or gouache, whatever. Here you can see the label I will show you real quickly. This is Holbein's HWC Utility Masking Ink is what they call it. So look up HWC Masking Ink by Holbein and you can purchase this on Amazon. I began by painting the other side of the glass framework that would be seen on the other side of the lantern. It has light shining on it, so I used some quinacridone sienna and yellow to paint those. The lantern itself is going to be a couple of different brown colors, and then I'm painting light in the stars that are venting the lantern. All of these can be done while the masking fluid dries because we're not going to get anywhere near the masking fluid at this point. Now I was just mixing a few colors in my palette that I'll be using for the lantern. Some of that quinacridone sienna and some brown. I think it was a brown oxide of some sort. And um, my piemonite brown I also, from Primatech, I also use. These are Daniel Smith colors. But you don't have to use those. You can use whatever you want. I just know people ask and then they want a list of my colors. So quinacridone sienna. Um, I used a lemon yellow and a quinacridone gold. Um, then there's the brown oxide, iron oxide, I guess. And um, that's pretty much it for the lantern. I'm just using some of my Piemonite brown to go down the other bits of framework here and uh, then I'll be moving on. And I'll be mixing these browns together, the brown iron oxide, the piamonite, and the quinacridone sienna, I kind of mix together. Um, but throughout the whole piece, I'll be using those same colors. I'll be using them on the branches as well as on the lantern. Now don't ask me why I'm painting with a liner <laughs> here. I guess I was just not paying attention and got into painting mode and just kept painting, but eh, it works. Now I've decided to go over the top portion of this with a darker color, although you don't really have to do this because a lot of it will be covered in snow but I do want it to start darker and then gradually as it goes down it gets lighter as it catches the light from the flame in the lantern.
The brush I was using here is a number four Legend brush from Cheap Joe's. Now here I'm just going in with some very, very pale lemon yellow. I watered it way down and I'm going to go around through the flame and then around the flame in order to give a halo effect to the flame itself. And then once that dries, I'm going to go ahead and put masking fluid over it. And then I go over the lantern several times with more paint at one point, I think it's here, I added a little bit of neutral neutral gray into my color so that uh, I could get it darker without making it black. You could also use some deep blue like in Danthrone or you could use indigo, whatever you have. Even ultramarine would work at making that a deep gray color. Now here I'm just taking some colors to see what I want to do before I put it on my paper. I'm letting the lantern dry, so I've set it aside, and I'm going ahead and getting some colors together uh, to decide what I want to use for my background colors. So I'm first wetting the paper. My brush got a little dirty, so I'm not worried about that. This is just scrap. And I'm taking some in Danthrone blue. I just love that deep blue. You could use indigo if you have that or mix some ultramarine and throw in a little bit of burnt sienna or something that'll darken it a little bit but you got to be careful not to add too much or it turns gray you've got to keep your blue heavier and then I used some rows of ultramarine and put that in with the blue and it kind of mixes it and goes from that reddish violet to the deep violet then I go ahead in with some perylene green uh, which I would use for my pine branches and I used some rich green gold as well to put them together and see how they'll work. Now once I get this all wet I decide to throw some salt on it to see what it'll look like but then when I dry it or when it dries you can't dry it or you lose the effect. Once it dried I, I didn't wait for it to dry long enough and thought it was dry and wiped it and I smeared everything so I really lost the effect of what the salt will do and the salt I'm using here is just some Himalayan pink sea salt uh, that I have. I find that that really draws it really draws the paint up and it does it fairly quickly as opposed to my regular iodized table salt. And now I was adding in some, uh, looked like some, what was that? That looks like rich or Aussie red gold is what that was. Yeah, Aussie red gold <clears throat> to make the light glow. So now I'm just going to set it aside and I, uh, I think I, I cut out the area where I show you what actually happened to the paper but I liked those colors so those are the colors I plan on using and I'm adding a little more burnt sienna here and there to lighten up certain areas oh there it is now is where I'm going to add the salt to it I'm just adding the salt then I'll set it aside to let it dry just want to wipe off that edge though so I don't dribble all over my table And I'm going to go ahead in and add a little salt to the top of my lantern. Hopefully it'll show some snow later, but if not, I'll probably end up going over it with my white ink anyway. Now it's time to start the background. Being careful not to touch the lantern. I'm going around all of that. You can let it dry and then mask it if you need to. But I'm just going to go ahead and wet the entire paper down. And... 
I will go around everything and then I'm going to start dropping in my color and just kind of letting it wash and do its own thing. And here is where I'm going ahead in and masking my flame. It's dry now, so I can go ahead and put the masking fluid over the top of that. And I'm also going to put it around the halo area so that it doesn't pick up dark color. Now on to the background, I'm adding in some perlene green over my branches, but I'm keeping it kind of on the um, washed out, watered down side. It's not real heavy paint. And I'm also adding in this rich green gold and I'm kind of mixing it together there on the paper and letting it do its own thing, making new color. Uh, sorry about the jingle bells. That's a notification on my phone that goes off sometimes. I apologize for that. Hopefully it wasn't too loud. It isn't on my end, but I never know how it's going to pick up on your end. So once I get this green down, then I'm going to go ahead in with some indanthrone blue. You'll notice on the left hand side of the paper, I'm not taking the indanthrone all the way to the edge of the paper like I am on the right hand side. This is kind of an off centered painting and I wanted to keep some of that paper with soft edges. So remembering that the whole paper is wet, it's allowing that blue to kind of wash its way out. And I will help it in a little bit by adding a little more water to the edge of the paper. And I'm adding in a little bit of that Aussie red gold to add some light around the lantern. And I'll also add some of the blue and green into that area as well. Actually, that's quinacridone sienna that I have there making it brighter. And now I'm introducing the Rose of Ultramarine, which is a red violet. You can make it yourself with a red and a blue, but I'll be mixing those colors together. And then once it dries, I will determine whether or not I need to add more paint. I'm adding some of the blues and <clears throat> more of that quinacridone sienna in, but later I will add a little bit of the green, the rich green gold in there so that you get a reflection of the pine branches behind the lantern. Now I'm going ahead with the wet brush and I'm just wetting the edges of the paper to soften those edges and to clean up whatever's hanging around the edge of the paper there. My paper's beginning to buckle here, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully put a 
clip on the bottom of the book to try to keep it as flat as possible so I don't get too many puddles of paint. And I decide to go ahead with some salt on the background to see what's going to happen here. Also, I have paint that is settling into certain areas, so I'm adding salt to those areas so that I don't get a bloom. Putting salt down there allows the absorption of the excess water that will puddle in the areas where there's a little divot in the paper. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some needles in with some of the perylene green that I had used in the underpainting, but you might want to wait on this because I decide that I want to add a little more color to that area underneath. Now it didn't hurt my painting, but depending on the type of green that you use, it could just wash it away. So you may want to wait on that. Unless you're happy with the way yours is looking, then go ahead and put your dark needles on. But I'm going to be adding some rich green gold uh, later, so I could have skipped this step. And I could have also skipped the step of painting the branches because what I'm doing is painting masking fluid and I don't even realize it here. But uh, brain fog, I'll get it together in a minute. Now I'm adding some of that green in to the lantern area there. Now here I'm going to go in. Excuse me, you guys. I'm sick today. Now my voice is horrible. But and I'm I will adding also the pine needles onto the, the branches, there. the darker ones, and also putting some in behind the lantern so that they continue throughout. I'm also adding in some of the rich green gold uh, with my brush and mixing the needle colors. Here I'm removing the salt on the paper, making sure it's all off because I'm going to go back in with some more color. I'm just re-wetting again with water first. Then I'm going to go back in with the same colors I had before because I'd like to make it a little darker. Again, I'm dealing with a little bit of warping, so I'm trying to straighten my paper out. You can see the areas here where the water wants to settle, where the paper is warping, so I will just flatten that out good with some clips and let it dry. I don't want to use my dryer on this to dry the paper because there is masking fluid down and that will force the masking to adhere to the paper, and I don't want that to happen. Now here I'm removing the clips now that my page is dry, and I will go ahead and remove all the masking fluid to see what I have underneath and make any adjustments with my bleed proof white ink. Now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the branches in with the brown like I had before on top of my masking fluid. Now I'm just touching up the dark needles again. And now I'm going to go ahead in with my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. Sometimes you'll see that it gets a little hard on top. You just need to poke through that. See how I tip it upside down and nothing happens? I just have to mix it. So what I'll do is I'll poke a brush down in there, the opposite end of a brush, and stir it up a little bit. And now I'm just going to go ahead and apply snow here and there, and then we are finished. Now I'm just going to sprinkle a little more snow on this, and what I use is the plastic brush end of an eraser. And the plastic bristles are long and large, so I can splatter snow really easily and evenly with it. And now I'm going to go in with my liner and just put some marks on the glass so that you can tell that there's glass there. And that's it. So remember everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Right now they are building my art studio, so I will have a building vlog coming very soon to you. Bye, everybody.